Hi everyone, it's Miss Melinda here, your spiritual worker from Miss Melinda's Metaphysical Services.com. I'm going to be talking to you a little bit today about uh, folk magical practices of Chinese and Asian cultures, specifically spirit money and joss paper. And I'm going to be talking about how um, those practices have influenced and seeped into hoodoo folk practices and spiritual folk practices in the United States. Uh, in order to move forward a little bit with this topic, I want to give us a strong foundation. So I do want to talk just a little bit about hoodoo. Um, it originated from African magical practices when the slaves were brought over to the United States. And it evolved into a very um, unique American tradition because it has been influenced by a lot of other cultural practices and traditions, including the indigenous American Indians, their practices, and also um, some European magical practices. Some of the big ones were Irish, Italian, and French. Of course, New Orleans had a huge role to play in this um, kind of melting pot of traditions. It was one of our first ports, one of the first places that slaves were brought into, and also one of the first places that the United States had free black people. Um, even before slavery started, a lot of African people lived in New Orleans as free people. So lots of rich history there. Um, and the other thing I'd like to point out about hoodoo practices is that it is a it's a living tradition. It's a living practice. And whenever we talk about traditions, traditions um, that are living, it means that they continue to, to evolve. They continue to influence more people and they continue to be influenced by more people. So it's growing, evolving, and changing all of the time, which is good because if it weren't living, then it would be dead. Um, but it also means that it changes and, you know, sometimes it's hard for people to accept change. So, um, yeah, just wanted to mention that a little bit before moving on to our main topic. So let me show you some of the spirit money that I have and we'll get started there. Here's one example of some spirit money. It's got a picture of a Chinese emperor on the front. On the back, it looks like a temple, but it's actually supposed to represent the hell bank. So sometimes these are also called hell notes or hell bank notes, in addition to ghost paper or spirit money. Here's another example that I have. I keep putting them upside down. Okay, here's another example. These ones are a little bit prettier. And these ones are actually made from Joss paper. So these are nice quality rice paper, which makes them better for burning. Okay, so let me show you some Joss paper while we're at it here. Here's some of my Joss paper that I use quite a bit. All right, so spirit money is considered Joss paper, but Joss paper is not considered spirit money, so there's some overlap there. Um, let's talk a little bit about the history of these items. Spirit money dates back to 1000 BC, and the way that this started in China was that historically emperors were buried with all of their belongings so that they could have everything that they needed in the afterlife. You don't want to send them off um, broke and, and poor and lonely when they were rich and wealthy and powerful in real life. You want them to be able to have a good afterlife and also there's a sense of um, debt there. The people wanted to make sure they're giving the emperor everything that he needs, everything that he deserves, and that they're not keeping any of his goods for themselves. So he used to be, they used to be buried um, even with their slaves and with their servants and with their court, with all of the people that worked with them and for them. So um, regardless if it was time for those people to pass on or not, those people would be buried with the emperor as well. Presumably they were executed or killed in some way first, but um, not necessarily. 
So that tradition, thankfully, evolved and changed over time, um, became a little bit more humane. And uh, at one point in history, the emperors or the very wealthy people were buried with their actual possessions. And then at some point in history, um, that changed as well. Families and lineages started to want to hang on to their wealth instead of um, putting it all in those tombs. So um, they, they developed the system of creating paper goods in order to bury with the wealthy people. And that tradition survives into modern times. Um, and there are, they will create even paper televisions, paper cars, paper jewelry, um, paper clothes, so that you can burn these as an offering to your ancestors or to the deceased that you pay reverence to, to make sure that they are having a good life. Um, and in modern times, there's a lot of symbolism in this. Um, it's not necessarily that you always believe that they need a watch or a car in the afterlife. It's, it's very symbolic, but there's some direct meaning as well. You want your ancestors and the deceased that you respect to have a good afterlife. You want to make sure they have everything that they need. So I do have some examples of those paper goods as well. There's a big envelope here, and you can see the gold watch on that. I'm not going to open this all up because it's kind of complicated, but it's a big envelope, as you can see. And inside here, this is actually a paper kimono. And I think I can pull out... There are paper slippers. So we've got some paper shoes. There's a paper kimono and an additional paper outfit in here as well as the paper watch on the outside. So let's talk a little bit more about the history of Joss paper and spirit money, paper goods. Um, it's really popular in Cantonese and Taiwanese culture specifically, but um, lots of other Asian cultures as well. Um, it, it's oftentimes burned, but it doesn't have to be burned. It's also placed right in the coffins, or it can be carried away by the wind. And when you carry it away by the wind, it can be the money itself is carried away by the wind. But there's another aspect to that as well. If you burn your paper money or spirit money, or even your Joss paper petitions, you want to make sure that the ashes are then carried away by the wind. So you wait until everything cools down, and then that's step two of your ritual is to take the ashes and let them be carried away by the wind. So these objects are used in addition to food, liquor, and natural magical tokens. So they're not the only kind of offerings that are given to the dead in these cultures. Um, they're just in addition to other offerings. And when you um, burn your spirit money for your ancestors or for the um, powerful dead or the powerful spirits that you want to revere, you don't just toss the money haphazardly into the fire. Um, you put it in a bundle and you lay it very nicely, very respectfully, very ceremoniously into the fire. And sometimes this means that it needs to be um, folded up in a certain way or placed in a certain packet. And different cultures will have different ideas about how this should be done. I do have some examples here of um, bundles of paper money to be offered in this way. Here is one of my bundles. This whole thing is made from paper, as you can see. It has this very nice tissue paper that's folded almost origami style into an envelope on the outside. And then on the inside, it's got the spirit money on the outside of the envelope. A good amount of it. But it's, it's actual spirit money, but it's also to represent what is inside the envelope. So this is kind of just symbolic spirit money. It's actual Joss paper, which is the nice um, rice paper that's good for burning. Okay, and the whole packet is made from paper. It's all folded very carefully and put together very beautifully. And I've got a couple of more examples of these as well.
Here's one that's three different packets of Joss paper. And inside each of these packets, there's more and different kinds of paper. This one is a full sealed envelope, a full packet in and of itself. And here's one more packet. Sorry, this paper actually goes with this. So we've got this beautiful Joss paper with the gold foil on the inside. Then we've got a nice packet of paper here. And then two more decorative papers that go with this. And that's a whole packet that goes together. Obviously with those packets that don't include the money and that have so much paper included that are all folded so beautifully and nicely, those are more for petitions. And the Joss paper is often used for petitions and it comes in various colors. It's, usually, it's always hand painted. So let's see. Like this kind. It's hand painted. Both of these colors are hand painted. The gold is actually symbolic of wishing paper. It's most used for wishing and it's also used a lot for fertility and prosperity. Um, these papers, the other two common colors are silver or copper and the Taoists actually use those colors as a coordination system to relate to different levels of spirits. So in the Taoist tradition, you would never give a high level or high ranking spirit, um, spirit money or hell, hell notes. You would always give them Joss paper. And if they're an especially high ranking spirit, you give them the gold Joss paper. Or if it's for a specific purpose such as fertility, abundance, or making a special wish, then it is gold Joss paper. Um, and then respectfully, the silver and the copper have other meanings, which I admit I don't have memorized at this time. So I'm sure you can find lots of information about that on the web. And um, now that I'm mentioning that, I do have, I have written quite extensively about the use of spirit money and Joss paper on my site. So I'm going to include links to those two items um, from my site in, in the comments of the video. Um, and mostly just for that historical information that I, I have researched for you. So another thing that the Taoists do is the business owners in Taoist traditions, they hold a ritual for the spirits of wealth and prosperity every 15 days and they burn outside of their door, outside of their place of business, spirit money every 15 days in order to bring in wealth and prosperity to their place of business. And another thing, another little ritual that's done is spirit money is often burned at crossroads and it's often believed in these cultures that crossroads have a, a particularly high um, number of spirits living at them. So we notice some cult cross-cultural commonalities there. Um, you know, we believe in crossroads gods, we believe in powerful spirits living at the crossroads, that the crossroads is a place where the physical world meets the spiritual world, um, guardian spirits, cemetery gates, things of that nature. So there's some things that our practices have in common. Another reason that the spirit money has come into use is because it's believed that it's bad luck to burn real money. So you wouldn't actually burn real money to give to your ancestors, pay your ancestors, or pay your ancestral debts. You would burn the paper money um, as, a, as a symbol of real money. And speaking of ancestral debts or karmic debts, that is one way that this money and the Joss paper also is used. Sometimes it's believed that your family or a particular family member has a very large karmic or spiritual debt. So the, the family members work to pay off those debts. Those debts might not be able to be paid off in one or two lifetimes. So the people continuously work to pay off the debts of their ancestors or pay off the debts of their, their family lineage. And once those debts are cleared, then the person in question is able to receive a new body and a new fate and be reincarnated and continue to live out their cycles of life. 
So that's one another way that the spirit money is used. And let's talk a little bit about um, how this money is actually used in American folk practices or hoodoo practices. So I often use the uh, paper money or spirit money for money petitions, of course. Um, you can use it for your petitions with your candle magic. I really like to include it in a sweetening jar for sweetening your prosperity or sweetening your wealth, bringing and attracting money to you. Um, another way that you can use it is by burning, the same way that they use it in the Asian cultures. Um, one specific way that I like to use it in burning is to release obstacles and blockages that hold you back from abundance and prosperity. A lot of people have obstacles and blockages that hold them back from abundance or hold you back from prosperity. So. Using money in a ritual to get rid of those blockages is a, a really powerful symbol. And using fire to get rid of blockages and release obstacles is really powerful as well. So combining the two is a great way to work to release those things and start to adopt some new mindsets and bring some more prosperity and abundance into your life. You can also shred the spirit money and use it to make your lucky green rice or use it in your lucky beans. Um, beans are a very lucky, lucky symbol for prosperity and wealth. I've seen them used quite a few different ways. You might put them in the bottom of a jar, um, put your picture in that jar and some other symbols of prosperity and burn a candle in the jar with your lucky beans. You might use your lucky beans in a mojo bag. Um, for instance. So you can use this spirit money in conjunction with those lucky beans or in conjunction with your lucky green rice. A lot of times real money or other kinds of paper goods, maybe even just green confetti is used in, in making lucky rice. So you could use the spirit money instead. <clears throat> okay, actually I think that that is everything that I wanted to cover for today. So like I said, I'll leave you some links that have a bunch of other research that I've done on the topics of Joss Paper and Spirit Money. Uh, if you have any questions about this video, be sure to let me know. If there's anything that you would like me to elaborate on or if you have a suggestion for a future video, I'm happy to take suggestions. Please like the video, please comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel, share the video, and thank you so much for watching and have a great day.